good evening to members of the gallery. Uh, before I start, I want to check with our personnel at the back um, whether we are on and live streaming. Yes? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, um, again, um, good evening to, um, to the councillors, to our officers and also to the members of the gallery. I'm glad that we have um, a good turnout here tonight for, for people to come and, um, and express their right to uh, make submissions to the applications that are going to be before us tonight. Before I start, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land that this meeting is, is taking place and pay my, pay my respect to the uh, Wurundjeri uh, um, people and the, of the Kulin Nation and acknowledge that this land um, was never ceded and that it is Aboriginal land and will always be Aboriginal land. The other thing I'd like to say, just as in terms of some housekeeping arrangements, first of all, um, because of the COVID restrictions, I'm glad that all of you are wearing a mask um, and that's part of the requirement of still maintaining these open, transparent and public meetings. And also, as you can see, we've seated you far enough apart so that we can respect the COVID restrictions. Um, the, um, the other thing too is, is that um, um, we are also um, um, live streaming the meeting, as I said, and, um, and the other comment in terms of housekeeping I'd like to say is that um, uh, just to um, say to councillors and also to the members of the public is that um, let's keep a, a very friendly and conversational uh, manner about us and to try and be as respectful as we can in the language that we use and the comments that we make and to be as professional as we, as we possibly can in, in, in dealing with these um, planning issues. I know sometimes they can get quite emotional, but let's um, try to be as professional and respectful as we can of each other. Okay, um, having said all that, um, I'd just like to move on to the, um, um, to the agenda. Um, we have um, some, um, uh, we have the membership of the, of the uh, committee, and I'd just like to note one apology, and that's the apology of the chair of this committee, who is the Mayor Lena Messina, and she puts in her uh, apologies, and as a result, that's why I'm sitting in to chair this meeting as the deputy chair. Okay, the next item on the agenda, councillors, is the, um, are there any disclosures of conflict of interest? I understand that Susan, Councillor Newton has a conflict of interest, please. Thank you, Chair Greco. I wish to declare a general conflict of interest in item 5.3, application for planning permit D352-2020. That's 31 Albert Street, Preston, which concerns the extension of hours to an existing liquor licence for the Olympic Hotel in Preston due to my role in my employment, which is La Trobe University and the Centre for Alcohol Policy Research. And just to clarify that, Councillor, you will you still be... Um, will you be leaving the meeting when that item is discussed or will you still be presiding over that decision? So I'll step out and leave the meeting for that item. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> okay, um, are there any other conflicts of interest from councillors? No more further conflicts of interest. Okay, moving on to item number four on the agenda, which is the confirmation of the minutes of the previous planning committee meeting. Do I have a mover? Uh, Councillor Rene, Rene, do I have a seconder for that? Um, Councillor McCarthy, um, those in favour? Okay, that is carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Okay, councillors, we move on to um, consideration of reports. Um, the first item that we have um, to consider is the application for a planning permit in regards to 24A to, um, to 26 Harbridge Street Reservoir. And I'll first ask our officers to provide us with a, um, an overview of that application. Thank you, Chair Greco. Yeah, the first item uh, relates to number 24 to 26 Harbury Street in Reservoir. This particular property uh, comprises of two lots uh, totaling 1,600 square metres in area. The site is within the general residential zone number two the proposal itself comprises uh, 10 double-storey dwellings. Two of the dwellings would contain three bedrooms and the remaining eight uh, with two bedrooms each. Two dwellings facing the street um, are laid out in what we call a reverse living layout. So they have 
uh, living rooms up upstairs and the use of a balcony facing the street. The layout is quite typical. Um, when we see development on a double block, this adopts the model of a driveway down the middle of the site and all garages uh, coming off that um, central access. One of the dwellings uh, does have its own access to the street, but the remaining nine are using the central access. In terms of a design, um, it's in a street um, that you can see has several um, medium density developments of different uh, styles that have emerged in the street over the last 30 years. Um, if, if we're talking about common elements in the street, I think um, the use of brick, the hipped roof forms, and the, the separation between the dwellings is certainly a theme in the street. So speaking to the set, to the proposed development, it does respond to that context um, through using recycled red brick, um, some gable forms to dwellings facing the street, and some hipped roof forms as well. As a result of the, uh, the public notification process, this application received 69 objections. Um, officers have assessed the, pro the project. It meets um, res code in all criteria except in a few minor examples. And on the back of that uh, level of compliance, it has a recommendation for approval. Thank you. Um, thank you for that presentation. Um, councillors, are there any questions um, to our officers in relation to this particular application? Uh, no questions? Okay. Um, if there are no questions, then we'll move on to, the, um, to hear some submissions from members of our uh, public. Um, first, I'll ask for the applicant, Mr um, Zoran Zanjinovic, um, to make a presentation. Um, Mr. Sanjinovic, you have um, three minutes to make your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councillors. Extensive consultations took place throughout the planning application with the uh, planning officer um, to ensure that this proposal not only responds to the local character and the various provisions of the planning scheme, but to ensure that the end result um, would be a good outcome for this street. The proposal responds to the good design guidelines that have recently been developed and, and adopted by the council, and this was supported by the council's urban designer, subject to conditions which are in the recommendations. In terms of the density, um, there are other medium density uh, developments in the street, and this proposal responds to that density form that's already um, within this neighbourhood. In terms of visual bulk, the proposal side setbacks, rear setbacks are all in excess of the provisions of Clause 55. Articulated first floor forms, the material finishes and the height, which is below the um, uh, requirements of the zone, ensure that there is no amenity impact to the neighbouring properties. In terms of those amenity impacts, there's no overshadowing of private open space or habitable room windows. The internal amenity of these properties is good in terms of their size, the living spaces, the bedrooms. The private open space areas are all usable and are all compliant with Clause 55. In terms of the garages, there's only uh, there's two crossings there. There's no new crossings. The, the garages are compliant with the standard in terms of their uh, widths and dimensions. Um, the access way is compliant with the Australian standards. So the garages will be used by those people that are living there. The visitor parking reduction that we've sought is based on traffic engineering advice that we've received, and the council's traffic engineers has supported this notion, who notes that there is an oversupply of parking in the street and transport is within walking distance of the site. In relation to waste, a shared collection is proposed in accordance with the requirements um, that have been given to us um, from Council's um, Waste Department. Um, we believe the proposal, including its design, its response to the character, should be supported. And we would kindly request that the recommendation put forward by the officer be supported by the Council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sanjinovic. Um, 
you may take a seat back in the gallery. Um, we also have a, a number of um, objectors that have nominated to speak. I'll ask the first objector to come up, uh, Ms. Gina Mekuri. I'm representing the 70 objectors, most that could not make it tonight, given that it has been a long weekend and other commitments. I note that the owners on the agenda are incorrect. Current title shows that the Bath Developments Proprietary to Limited are the owners. In addition, I note that there were errors performed during the advertising process on the planning development part. These two simple clerical errors raise concern of the planning department's ability to deal with a more complex planning process. We are not against development, however, this is a large overdevelopment. Development seeks to add eight more dwellings, make it a total of 10. Current developments have already put a strain on the resources and services in the street. Contrary to the applicant's claims, Harbury Street is already congested. The Google Maps photos used in the traffic report does not give a true indication of what parking and traffic is like on Harbury Street. As witnessed by the councillors who visited the site and with series of photos of parking on a typical day that I have sent them, a much more true representation of what happens with cars in the street is shown. It is on a very rare occasion that there is a 90% vacancy. There has been occasions where rubbish trucks and ambulance have had issues in travelling down the street. Fact that the required number of cars cannot be accommodated on the site is already an indication of overdevelopment. Sure. Communities should, should not be bearing the burden of a bad development. We cannot control, and neither do we want to control, who shall live in these dwellings. But a two-bedroom dwelling could easily have ownership of four cars. One car is accommodated on site. Where do the others go? On the street? We understand that the guidelines dictate the car numbers required. And this is the case where the guidelines should be followed. This development cannot be allowed to reduce the car numbers needed. Current events have shown that there is a large increase in car purchases. Councillors that have been on site have witnessed firsthand the impacts of recent developments of, simple so of similar size and design. The recent developments expose what an overdevelopment does to adjoining properties and the street. Neighbourhood character is impacted. We cannot dismiss the neighbourhood character as a little item as per the report. The character is large front and rear yards, affording landscape opportunities. The proposal and the other developments have destroyed backyards, not only the subject site, but the adjoining as well. Neighbours can attest to what it is like to live next door to a series of double-storey dwelling. No longer is there an open rear yard, but a wall of visible bulk. Please go witness it before making decisions that impact on the community. Witness it so you can make decisions on keeping with the intention of the City of Darabin planning policies. I ask Council to refuse this application. Thank you very much. You're right on time on three minutes. Thank you. Uh, can I ask if uh, uh, Ms Grace Ford is here and if she would like to step forward and make a submission? Uh, Ms Grace Ford is not here. Uh, Mr David Ford, who has put in to make a submission, is he here tonight? No. Uh, uh, Mr Lewis Ford, is he here tonight? No. OK. And the last speaker that's asked to speak is Mr John McCurry. Is he here tonight? Would he, would he like to step forward? Yes, please come forward. Excuse me, can, you, can we just start, start you up again? And could you speak into the microphone so we could all hear you? Oh, Darabin's planning scheme calls for incremental increase in dwelling numbers. Going from two to 10 is not incremental. Recent developments in the growth zones in the area go for 10 apartments. So how is 10, the proposed 10 units in the general residential zone not considered high density? The plan mentions that the numbers should be, not be the determination. I strongly disagree. It is critical. 
Planning is not about ticking boxes or trying to get away with maximum. Darabin, strategic planning, and especially for a reservoir, calls for a slow build-up of density. This is on purpose. Darabin councils should be seeking a good design response, not the, the designs to use the guidelines to get around items. Although reverse living is acceptable as a front dwelling, it is problematic that it limits the interaction of the occupants with the street. The proposal has reverse living, not because they are looking for at a different typology, but rather because they could not get the design to work with private secluded space on the ground floor. I believe the proposal has been referred to Council's internal architect, the same office who in the past has stated that they do not want developments to have red brick and black metal cladding. Yet this is exactly what is being proposed here. Where are the references to neighbourhood character? Where is the design of large open spaces that is characteristic to the area. Misleading 3D images are supplied by the applicant. The site is not on a green field site where you see the visual bulk from 100 metres away. I encourage planners to go and visit and get a true feeling what it feels to live next door to such developments. The visual bulk is excessive and in your face. The car turning circles do not work. You can see that the circles hit garden beds and at, in occasions, walls. There will need to be corrective moves in for order the cars to work. In addition, it seems the traffic survey was conducted on a very rare day. In my 25 years living on a street, I never recall a 90% va vacancy. Even the planner identifies that the entries to the units are not safe and needs to be addressed. This further is evidence further stating, showing that the entries and cars are not suitable or designed well. Landscape is inadequate and all canopy trees are proposed onto the boundary, showing one, that they do not fit in the proposed yards and two, raising future problems for the neighbours. It is only when questioned yeah. about permeability of the site... Excuse me, Mr McCordy, your, your time's almost up. Can you just wrap up, please? Yep. Yeah, that demonstrated that what was on the drawings is incorrect. It was 42%, now 25%. I ask that Council refuse this application based on previous reports and that further submissions be applied. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay, councillors, um, we've heard from our officers, we've heard from the objector, and we've heard from the applicant. Um, do I have a motion before council in relation to this application? Um, yes, I'd like to move an alternative motion that's being okay, circulated. Can, uh, can we see that alternative motion before it's seconded? Uh, I understand the motion will be put up on the screen, is that right? Just waiting for the motion to appear on the screen. Okay, Councillor Lawrence, is that your motion? Um, that's correct. Okay, do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Newton. Okay, Councillor Lawrence, would you like to speak in relation to the motion that is up there on the screen? Um, uh, yes, uh, through you, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Greco. Um, this is a motion for refusal it uh, fundamentally puts the argument here for Clause 22 and Clause 55 of the Darabin Planning Scheme. Um, it also highlights some of the technical areas where it hasn't complied, namely parking location, site and rear setbacks, dwelling entry, and uh, other items here also listed are what were raised by objectors in terms of the visual bulk. And the visually dominant bulk isn't just an issue to do with the front of the street, it's to do with its impact on garden character of adjoining properties, which we've heard um, there's large gardens uh, in the rear and the front of many of these houses. Um, and 
and that's the uh, main clauses uh, are listed there in terms of um, where the developments had to go past our planning scheme requirements to squeeze in 10 units fundamentally. So for the sake of uh, data and ca neighbourhood character in the region and also for the integrity of our planning scheme, I think we, ne we need to uh, refuse this application. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Newton, would you like to speak? Thank you, Chair Greco. So I'd like to thank Gina and John uh, and their neighbours for showing some of the councillors this site. Uh, it's really good to see it in person because what we can see on the plans is that it's actually two fairly narrow blocks. And as the objective said, we are talking about two houses going to 10, which really is a lot even in reservoir. When I look at the plans, what I see is small bedrooms. Um, and similar to Councillor Lawrence, I also see a lot of visual bulk. Uh, I do also acknowledge that I believe that some of the signage was a little bit smaller, so you know we'd like to see that improve next time. Um, something I just want to mention is that you know we see a lot of these applications, and you know I'm very happy to meet with developers. I'm very happy to meet with applicants, objectors, really anyone who wants to meet with me about these applications. But we do have good design guidelines that we brought in a couple of years ago, and you know I am seeing some improvements in reservoir, but this doesn't cut it for me. Uh, we know that this sort of development, you know, talking about 10 on a reasonably small site, we know that they can look pretty tired in a few years' time, and I really want to see a better quality of development coming to us, particularly in Reservoir, um, and I'm quite invested in this, as this is my former ward, um, and board is my current ward, which goes up to Edward Street. So, um, you know, I just think this one doesn't quite cut it for me, um, and I really, really want to see a better quality of development going forward. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Newton. Are there any further speakers in relation to the motion before us? Um, Councillor Rennie, speaking for or against the motion? Again, uh, for the motion. For the motion, great. Um, thank you. And I've given this one um, quite a lot of thought because in many respects it is quite compliant, but I think it is a little excessive in what it seeks to do. And in particular, I'm concerned that it doesn't sufficiently reflect the good design guidelines for medium density development that this council has endorsed. I'm particularly concerned about issues such as the walls on the boundaries um, adjoining rear backyards. I think it's one thing to have a wall on a boundary at the front of a property where there's a, a garage. I think it's quite a different thing to put that in position on, on a boundary at the back, um, fronting someone's backyard. I think the tandem car parking is problematic, the reverse living topology, but particularly the dominance of the central driveway, I think is something that um, a closer adherence to our good design guidelines would avoid. And so I think all of these problems could actually be solved by a reduction in dwelling numbers from 10 to eight, and I'd really um, recommend that the developer go back and look at this again. I think eight is more in keeping with what we might expect to see on a block and is still a fairly ambitious development. So by no means would that um, limit development too much, but I think it would actually mean that they could overcome those issues and others that I've talked about. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. Are there any further speakers in relation to this motion? Councillors, if there's no further speakers, I'll put the motion of refusal um, to the vote. Those in favour of this motion to refuse, put your hand up. Okay, councillors, that's a unanimous decision. So as a result of that, the planning committee has decided, made the decision to refuse this particular application on the grounds that have been listed there in the, in the motion. As a result of that, um, the, um, the applicant and the objectors will be notified in writing of the planning committee's decision and the um, applicant obviously has the right to appeal to VCAT and in the documentation that is sent out to the applicant, there will be the time frame there in which the applicant um, can appeal the decision of council to VCAT. So thank you very much, councillors. Thank you to the um, um, objectors for their presentation and also thank you to the applicant for his presentation. Councillors, we'll move on to the next item, which is um, 5.2. Two, and and that application is in relation to. Bear with me. Um, it's in relation to 38 Oak Hill Avenue in Reservoir. Again, could I get a report from our officers? Thank you. Thank you, Chair Greco. 
Yeah, this next item relates to the land at number 38 Oak Hill Avenue in Reservoir. This is a corner block on the corner of uh, Xavier Grove. This property is in the uh, general residential zone number two and a heritage overlay also applies to the site. This particular application um, involves an extension to the existing dwelling. Now, the project has evolved over several um, plan iterations. So the initial plans um, that we're not presenting tonight were quite different to these ones in the sense that the rear extension was in a slightly different location, um, the form and the location of the rear garage and upper floor element was also in a different location. Those sort of plan iterations um, have evolved with, uh, in consultation with the council planning officer and critically council's heritage officer. The heritage officer has provided the applicant with some very uh, detailed advice when it, as it relates to the roof form, uh, even the balustrading detail, the depth of the balcony so through those discussions, we've arrived at the current scheme, um, as you can see on the, on the uh, screen above. Do you want to go to the next slide? Or maybe go, yeah. So what we see there on the, on the bottom is actually the view um, of the proposal from the side street, which is Xavier Grove. Critically, the existing dwelling um, by and large is retained, so the larger part of that footprint is retained. At the rear there is a single storey addition with a flat roof, thank you. And then further beyond uh, to the east of that is a new garage and a um, upper level section as well. What's probably critical to highlight uh, with that rear garage and upper level addition is it's quite squat, it's quite low. Typically, two-storey forms would be um, provided with six to 6.5 metre walls with a roof form above. The walls on this particular addition are only five metres in height, so it's quite a low um, building for a two-storey structure. That particular gar garage actually replaces uh, the current garage, which is um, set back uh, probably only half a metre from the side street and is roughly in line with what we're looking at, uh, the single storey section of the extension. Go to the ground level. So that gives us the plan up on the screen, shows the ground level um, floor plan of the single storey addition, which is set back uh, quite some way from the side street, and then also the, the garage, which is set back from the side street and off the east boundary. The other element uh, in the top left corner is uh, an introduction of a proposed car space uh, into the front garden area of the property off Oak Hill Avenue. Having considered uh, the application, um, officers have determined the proposal is acceptable in terms of uh, the design uh, on heritage grounds. There are conditions. Uh, one of those conditions deals with that car space proposed off Oak Hill Avenue that is not deemed to be an appropriate uh, response to the heritage character. Cars should be contained within integrated garages uh, off lanes or off uh, side streets and not in front of the dwelling. So that is to be removed as a condition. Another critical condition relates to the garage and upper floor element, which contains two bedrooms uh, and a secondary living space. Um, we don't wish to see this uh, used as a second dwelling, so there's a condition on the permit uh, restricting the use of that space as a, as a separate dwelling. Uh, the other conditions um, are the more general planning, typical planning permit conditions. Um, and on, on balance of all of the criteria that we assess this application against, it is recommended uh, for approval. Thank you. Um, thank you for that presentation and, and for that overview. Are there any questions, councillors, of our officers in relation to this particular application? If there are no questions, councillors, 
I'll move on to um, hearing from the applicant and, our obje and the objectors. Can I first ask the, the applicant, um, Roberta Di Vito, to come up and provide us with a, a three-minute presentation? Uh, my name is Roberta De Vito, and along with my husband Peter, we are the owners of 38 Oak Hill Avenue Reservoir. Um, this house is a family. Could you please speak into the microphone? Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> this is a family home, and we are seeking council's permission to renovate and update this property to suit the needs of our family. Um, like my neighbours, we value the area's character and the heritage values, and we do not want to diminish those in any way. For that reason, we have worked closely with the council's town planning team to arrive at a design that they feel is acceptable. We have made compromises along the way, but have done so in order to ensure that the design is an acceptable one, given the heritage values of the Oak Hill Estate. Um, we have read the objections lodged by some of our neighbours to the development. While we understand that people have the right to object, we were disappointed by suggestions that we seek to subdivide the land or illegally turn the rear garage into a second dwelling. That is not our intention. Um, one thing that co the COVID crisis has taught us is that our homes need to be flexible, um, flexible enough to respond to changing needs or circumstances, and we feel that the plan before you tonight allows us that flexibility. Um, we take great comfort in reading that the plans have been supported by Council's Town Planning Department, Heritage Advisor and other internal referral departments. While we are grateful for the support of the Council's officers, there are two matters that we want to discuss with you tonight, which Peter and I will go through. Um, the first is the condition to reduce the crossover width of the driveway to the garage um, to three metres. Whilst we agree 5.5 um, metres is wide, it's quite wide. However, it is necessary as the garage is situated 1.8 metres from the boundary um, because of an easement. We also have a power pole in the middle of um, the garage. So it'll make it difficult to swing our cars in. Um, if possible, would you allow a 4.5 metre width as a consideration? Um, also, it would be neater and easier to maintain if both crossovers are connected and there is no patch of grass between the driveways between us and our neighbour. Um, the second issue of concern is the deletion of the crossover and driveway to Oak Hill Avenue. Um, the report currently says on-street parking is unrestricted on Oak Hill Avenue in Xavier Grove. I think there's been some misunderstanding as there currently is no standing allowed in front of our house nor on the whole side of our street. Um, on Oak Hill Avenue. This means that allowing the crossover and driveway will not reduce the supply of on-street um, parking in Oak Hill Avenue. Um, furthermore, our house is 1.8 metres from the boundary, um, given the average car size... You just have 15 seconds. 1.8 metres. Um, so from a heritage perspective, there are already several crossovers provided to the properties in Oak Hill that don't lead to a driveway but are situated at the front of the house as further photos in front of you. This is not an exhaustive list, but it gives you... The time is up. What is needed. If you just want to conclude, just the last um, sentence, if you want to conclude. Um, uh, uh, so this is a sense of what is needed along the street. So, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr DiCerio, did, did you want to speak also? Um, my name is Peter. Peter, yeah, do you want to grab the microphone? If you... Thank you. Um, I've supplied some photos to the committee to see... Could you speak into the microphone better? Yep, great. Spot on. <laughs> I've supplied some photos to the committee to have a look at that. Yeah, because there's no parking on Oak Hill whatsoever on our side, um, everyone tends to park in the first spot they see when they try to look for a spot, and that's in Xavier Grove. Our house is the first house, and they all park in front of our spot. So therefore, we need that extra spot at the front just because we have you know, a family of four and it's not enough parking spots. And also, I have a, a ute. I work as a gardener. I have a trailer. Many times I cannot park in front of my house because other cars that belong on, that live on Oak Hill Avenue park in that spot. And that's also photos of that situation as well. And there's also a few more photos of other houses that the last three photos are of houses that are also on corners that um, have dual access to their property, one from the front 
and also from the side. And in my opinion, the front axis does not make it look worse or take away from the heritage value. I believe it, it's a good look and yeah, it's in within the heritage values, I believe. In, okay. We have Look. elderly parents as well that occasionally come over and there's nowhere for them to park as well. So that front spot will come in useful. Okay, look, thank you very much for, to, to both of you for your submissions. Uh, please take a seat back in the gallery. Uh, now it's our opportunity to hear from the objectors. Uh, is Mr Grant Madden here tonight? Yeah, please come up. Again, Mr Madden, you also have three minutes um, to speak. Good evening, my name is Grant Madden. I live, on, I live at 18 Xavier Grove, two houses down from the proposed application address. Whilst the application is under 38 Oak Hill Avenue address, the proposed garage will be situated on Xavier Grove, the proposed balcony will face Xavier Grove, and so it is the impact on Xavier Grove where much of the emphasis needs to be focused. Our objection is that this application and the recommendation of the Darabin Planning Department has given insufficient assessment or weighting on the impact of Xavier Grove given the heritage overlay requirements that need to be met. It's important to clarify, we are not opposing the single storey attached extension to the retained main dwelling. What we are opposing is the proposed double storey outbuilding or garage. As the planning application outlines, the proposed garage features a, a double garage at ground floor with two bedrooms, a bathroom, an open living area at first floor and a balcony. For all intents and, pur and, and purposes, it is a townhouse. It has passed through the planning department in its current form because the plans do not pos possess a food preparation area or a sink. The addition of these simple fixtures would have had this building classified as a second dwelling and therefore automatically rejected. We are calling on our Darabin councillors to elevate the planning application process to something greater than a checkbox exercise and recognise the true form of a proposed development, which in this situation is much more akin to a townhouse than a garage. Having said that, if you are to assess this application in accordance with its technical definition of a garage, we are of the belief that it would be extremely inconsistent to, on one hand, claim that a 6.5 metre high, two-storey building with a balcony meets the definition of a garage, whilst at the same time, claim that the same building is non-dominant and recessive in accordance with heritage overlay requirements. Surely it can only be one or the other, and we hope that our councillors will share our view on this. May I also state that Xavier Grove residents are not anti-development. What we are is passionate about preserving the heritage significance of this truly beautiful street that we are fortunate to live in, a street that the Darabin Heritage Review is designed to protect. And as such, we would encourage applicants to submit a revised planning application for a garage that is single storey, recessed back in line with the current houses within Xavier Grove streetscape and consistent with the heritage significance of the existing streetscape of Xavier Grove. We would also encourage the applicants to, en seconds. to engage with the neighbours prior to submitting a future planning application, which hasn't happened in this instance. Lastly, I'd like to leave you with some photo images to provide origin additional context to the impact of this two-storey garage on Xavier Grove, covering the scale of the proposal and its dominance. Uh, Mr Madden, your time is up. I'll just give you... Yeah, I'm um, just finishing up. Covering the scale of the proposal, the lack of recession and frontage alignment, uh, pictures of the beautiful homes that currently exist and a recent example of a renovation which does preserve the cultural significance. Thank you, Mr Madden. So we have a, another objector that will be presenting tonight, uh, Mr. John Martin. Is Mr. John Martin here? Yes. Please come up, grab the microphone, and again, uh, you have three minutes, please. We believe that the proposed uh, double-store garage is inconsistent with the Darabin planning scheme um, 
The key reasons for the proposal should be rejected are the proposal fails a purpose test of 43.01 of the conservation and enhancing of heritage areas. And secondly, the proposal fails a decision guideline test of 43.01-8 as the bulk form or appearance of the proposed building is not in keeping with the character and appearance of the adjacent buildings. I'll go through those in a bit more detail. The purpose of the Darabin Planning Scheme as defined in section 4301 includes to conserve and enhance those elements of, that contribute to the significance of heritage place. The double storey garage doesn't comply with the purpose test as it doesn't conserve or enhance the streetscape and secondly the garage will dominate the streetscape. Also, uh, the decision guidelines of section 43.01-8 of the Darabin Planning Scheme requires that the location, bulk, form or appearance of the proposed building is in keeping with the character and appearance of adjacent buildings. The photos which are being handed around show that the adjacent buildings are sim single storey 1920s dwellings, so a 6.8 metre high building with a solid wall that stretches from near the street to the back of the, uh, of the, the block um, is in, not in keeping with the character of the neighbourhood and clashes with the beautiful 1920s Californian bungalows of Xavier Grove. Planning guidelines also require an assessment of whether the proposed works will adversely affect the significance, character or appearance of a heritage place. The urban planner says that the building is set back behind the facade of 38 Oak Avenue. However, this misses the point that the garage faces Xavier Grove and its bulk will dominate Xavier Grove and not Oak Avenue. This is clearly shown in the photographs. Also on page 72 of the agenda is an extract from the Darabin Heritage Review 2000 and it relates to Oak Hill, um, Heritage Overlay Area. It says, the new garages and carport should, carports should be recessive, recessive and not dominate the composition of new buildings designs as seen from the street. Secondly, the contribution made by the existing single storey dwellings to the cultural values of the area should be conserved to avoid the construction of additions which impact on the aspect of significance of place. Our view is that the proposed garage is totally unsympathetic with these aims. It's important to note uh, that number 10 and number 13 Xavier Grove are examples where garages have been required to be built in backyards to preserve the streetscape. Mr Martin, you have 10 seconds if okay, you can Okay, so um, just to wrap up, accordingly we believe the application should be rejected. We have no objections with a single storey garage and there are other options for additional two bedrooms that preserve the Xavier, Xavier Grove streetscape. Thank you very much, Mr Martin. Uh, a further objector is uh, Mr. Craig Spark. Is Mr. Craig Spark here? I'm not talking about this yet. Sorry? I'm here, but I'm not talking about I'm afraid I can't. Can somebody relay that to me? Mr. Spark doesn't need to talk tonight. He's here to observe. OK, thank you. OK, Mr. Jonathan Toye. Is Mr. Jonathan Toye here? Please come up. Again, you have three minutes. As a uh, resident of Xavier Grove, I feel that the proposed building variations to 38 Oak Hill Avenue are not in keeping with the existing streetscape of Xavier Grove. Whilst efforts to minimise the effect of these variations appear to have been taken into account for the Oak Hill Avenue side, sadly I, I, I feel that it appears that the Xavier Grove side has been overlooked. Um, this is to do with the double storey garage. Um, this can also be seen by the uh, sheer amount of objections received, uh, with 13 out of 20 residents objecting. Um, uh, this clearly defines that there's obviously a majority in the streetscape feeling the same way about this. Um, I understand there are rules around building, um, but I'd like to uh, question the effectiveness of the advertising of this build. The vast majority of the street found out about the application through word of mouth, uh, speaking with neighbours and uh, some weren't even aware of the proposal. Uh, it raises uh, the question that maybe more objections might have been submitted if the traditional advertising method had been employed uh, rather than the COVID um, version we saw. Uh, 
the main objection is that it's going to be a dominant garage from the streetscape on, on uh, Xavier Grove side. And uh, there's only one other really modern house on this uh, street. And um, I just feel that it's just not going to be in keeping. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Toy. Um, please take a seat back in the gallery. Yeah. Okay, councillors, um, we've heard from the applicant and the objectors, and also we've got a report here in front of us, and we've heard from our officers. Um, do I have a motion in relation to this particular application? I have an alternative motion. Um, can, we, can we see that alternative motion? There it is, up on the screen. Uh, councillors, after you get an opportunity to read that, can I have a seconder to that motion? I'll Councillor McCarthy, you prepared to second it? Okay. Um, Councillor Williams, would you like to speak in relation to the motion that appears there on the screen? That the planning permit application not to be supported on the following grounds. The proposal does not meet the objections of Clause 43.01, Heritage Overlay, and the City of Darabin Heritage Review 2000 in particular. A, the location, bulk and appearance of the two-storey garage, Living space is not in keeping with the character and appearance of the adjacent buildings. B, the two-storey garage living space will dominate the streetscape of Xavier Grove. C, the proposal will adversely affect the significance, character and appearance of the heritage place and the existing single-storey dwelling. D, the proposed over the crossover and car parking space of Oak Hill Avenue will adversely affect the heritage place. Um, I can speak towards this now. Um, Oak Hill Estate is actually a very small pocket of Darabin that has a heritage overlay, either on the land or the homes in the area compared to other parts of Darabin. A heritage protection is to conserve and enhance heritage places of nature or cultural significance to ensure that development does not adversely affect the significance of heritage places. And many of the Oak Hill homes are restricted even to the point where the externally paint controls are applied and unable to sub subdivide the land. The purchaser takes pride in owning a property that has a heritage protection, that the homes are somewhat protected and gives the neighbours reassurance that the double storey apartments or multiple units are not being built next door. The proposed crossover will create further car parking overflow into nearby streets, particularly Xavier Grove. The bulk look of the two-storey garage is something that um, I'm not particularly familiar of with what happens in Oak Hill, especially at the front of Xavier Grove. Um, and I believe that there's a bit of overlooking of the privacy in the upper bedrooms towards the neighbour of Xavier Grove. The heritage overlay is part of the local planning scheme and Darabin Council spends a lot of money in ensuring that when we do any type of heritage that we try to ensure that we're protecting areas that need to be protected. And I find that this proposal fails to deliver a positive contribution to the heritage area while protecting the amenity of its neighbours and surrounding properties. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor McCarthy, as a seconder, would you like to speak? I'll reserve my speaking rights for the moment. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Are there any further speakers in relation to the notice of refusal, in relation to this um, motion of, of re refusal? Um, Councillor Rennie, speaking for or against? I'm speaking against the motion. Thank you, Chair Greco. And I'm doing so because I think it's important to actually um, note different views and to have a debate on issues such as this. I'm familiar with the Oak Hill area and have spent some time driving around, looking at it and contemplating what it would mean to have a development such as this on site. And it seems to me that the greatest way to ensure the future of homes in this area is to encourage people to invest $400,000, and I've no doubt this is a $400,000 renovation, in making these homes fit for their purpose and their families. And families are diverse and require different sorts of space. So I'm pretty loath to tell people how um, they should manage their homes if they actually understand what their requirements are. The existing garage is not an asset and the garage that is proposed is going to be set further back. 
The structure won't, will be of a similar height to the house, so I reject the idea that it's overly dominant. But most importantly, I do think that this type of investment is actually what's going to guarantee that this house remains in this spot for the next 50 years and beyond. There's nothing in a heritage overlay that actually stops people demolishing and rebuilding something completely different. If they wish to do that, they require a planning permit and have to respect the heritage values. Um, but I actually think that a renovation of this type is a much superior outcome to having people say, well, the house isn't fit for our purposes and we'd like to rebuild something, so we will build a mock uh, Californian bungalow of similar type. 15 seconds, uh, Cousin. Thank you. I, I note that uh, there are a couple of properties in the street that don't have contributory value. There are also a number of, a couple of properties in the street that do have a second story. And for those reasons, I think that, you know, I'm inclined to follow the recommendation of our officers and the heritage assessment that they've undertaken and uh, vote against this um, in favour of actually granting a planning permit on this one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Reddy. Are there any further speakers in relation to the motion of refusal? Um, Councillor McCarthy, would you like to exercise your right to speak? Uh, no, not at this stage. Okay. If there are no further speakers, um, therefore I put this motion of refusal before Council. Those in favour of the motion and the grounds that appear there on the screen, put your hand up. Those against? Okay. We will need to take a, a, a tally. So those against are Councillor Hannan and Councillor Rennie. Those in favour of the motion of refusal uh, are Councillor Williams, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor um, Dimitriakis, Councillor Greco, Councillor Newton and Councillor Lawrence. The decision therefore of the um, planning committee is to refuse the application on the grounds that people can see there up on the screen. As a result of that, um, the, the council has made the decision not to allow that application to go ahead. The applicant and the objectors will be notified in writing of, of the planning committee's decision. And as before, the previous application before us, the applicant has the right to appeal the council decision uh, before VCAT. So thank you to the applicants for their submission and also thank you to the objectors for their submission. Okay, councillors, we'll move on to the next uh, planning item, which is 5.3. Councillor Newton. Conflict um, that I would like to declare. Would you like me to repeat it? Yes, or? if you could, yep, for the sure. record. So for the record, I wish to declare a general conflict of interest in item 5.3, application for planning permit D352-2020, 31 Albert Street, Preston, which concerns the extension of hours to an existing liquor licence for the Olympic Hotel in Preston due to my role as of employment by La Trobe University at the Centre for Alcohol Policy Research. Thank you, Councillor Newton. We'll call you back once we're finished making a decision on this. Okay, councillors, um, we'll ask for a, a, a report, a presentation from our officers again, please. Thank you, Chair Greco. Yeah, the final item tonight relates to the property at number 31 Albert Street in Preston. As you'd probably know, that's the, uh, the Olympic Hotel um, right near Bell Street. So that's a, obviously it's a licensed gaming venue. So what the applicant is seeking to do there is um, shift the hours of use and also extend the hours. So the, the shifting of the hours would mean um, later opening times, but then also uh, later closing, so well into the early hours of the morning, um, and also an extension of the hours on selected days. So the, the implications of those changes effectively mean um, Darabin residents can visit this venue um, at extended times during the day to um, go to the hotel or go to the gaming uh, venue. So obviously we've assessed this at officer level. Uh, um, we've consulted with internal departments. Um, that is a concern on planning grounds. It's a concern when you consider the context of other gaming venues uh, in the Darabin area, the ability of um, people to visit other venues together with this venue and the timing of the closing of those other venues, and that all adds up to um, 
some pretty severe social impacts that our residents are already experiencing uh, in making these venues more available and um, indirectly aligning their opening hours means you know more residents have the ability to visit these venues which as I said there are you know social impacts which are detailed in the report um, and it's on largely on those on that basis that we are recommending refusal of this particular application. Thank you for that presentation. Are there any questions of our officers from councillors? Councillor McCarthy. Um, just a sort of a procedural question. Give it, just wanting to understand why the um, the resulting effect of extended opening hours should this be supported at VCAT. Um, why that doesn't also trigger um, consideration by the Victorian um, uh, Gaming and Liquor Regulation. Like, just need to understand the relationship between both a planning matter and a regulation of gaming activity matter in this regard. So yeah, we'd have to go through the VCGLR as well. First step would be through planning, which is us uh, at Council. And then, um, at least for the liquor licence side of things, a planning permit's operating hours. Because in this case, what they're actually seeking to do is alter the operating hours under the liquor licence. But what that, in effect, does is um, also extend the gaming hours. So there's a link between those two. So they have to come to council first. A council permit issued um, for liquor licence hours can override a VCAGLR uh, requirement for hours. So they come to us first, we've done public consultation, and then we make a decision, and then that's taken to the VCGLR. And the VCGLR, if the permit was granted, in all likelihood, they would align those hours into their planning permit as well. So there would be a separate VCAGLR permit, and in all likelihood, would align with our operating hours. If, if a permit was gra ever granted. So, th thank you. If I can just follow, ask a follow-up, because this is yes, the first please. time I've seen something like this come before us. Um, so the VCGLR effectively follows council's lead in relation to this matter, because it's not an increase in the number of machines, but just an increase in the operating hours. Yeah, and in all, in all VCGLR permits, there's always a disclaimer at the top that these conditions can be overridden by a council permit. Thank you. So there's that dy dynamic at play. Mm, thank you. Thank you for that explanation. Councillor Williams, you have a question? Yes. Um, you mentioned that no other place in Darabin is doing this. What about other municipalities? As in other gaming venues mm. in other municipalities? Mm. Apart uh, from maybe the Crown, but... As in changing the hours? Mm -hmm. um, like, is this, is this new or...? No, it isn't. I mean, gaming venues change hours. I mean, there's been other applications for other gaming venues to extend hours. Um, but critically, what we looked at is the sort of the timing, like other venues close at 1, for example, or 3. This one now currently closes at 3 a.m. They want to close at 5 a.m. So it creates a situation where you could be at one venue at, such an, you know, at a certain time, and then you find that there's another venue open beyond opening. that time, yep. so you've got the ability to kind of like a bit of a go to multiple crawl. venues, and that's 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 a critical issue. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions, councillors, or clarifications? If there's no further questions or clarifications, uh, can I seek a motion from councillors? Councillor McCarthy, move in a motion. I'd like to move the officer's recommendation. Okay, um, there it is up on the screen. Moved by Councillor McCarthy, seconded by Councillor Williams. Councillor McCarthy, would you like to speak in relation to this motion? Uh, thank you, Acting Chair. Um, and thank you also to our officers for uh, their work in putting together this report, which um, made for interesting reading. And as, as prefaced by my question but earlier, this is not something that we, um, uh, that I can recall seeing where there's a, a change of hours a pro a proposed, which would in effect um, you know, potentially increase the, uh, the risk of gambling harm. And for me, this is a, a primary consideration here, is that whilst on the one hand there is a consideration about the operation of a, a venue which is largely um, you know, framed in, in the liquor licence um, space, 
this is in fact an increase in gambling activity and gaming activity, um, which is of course, as we know, um, a serious risk to our residents' health and wellbeing, um, as one of the critical uh, indicators of, um, of, uh, of, of damage that's being done to our residents. We know that when we have increased access to EGMs, we also see a commensurate increase um, in gambling-related harm that comes from that. And that's really what this comes down to, is are we prepared to um, support an application or not? In this case, the recommendation is that we do not. Um, we do not have that decision now before us because there has been an appeal um, uh, to, well, there, there has been an appeal to, to VCAT, so, um, so this is effectively us us taking a position that we will need to defend um, through that process as well. Um, what is really important here, and I think councillors need to understand the importance of our decision making here, is that we have a strong policy um, that talks about, about reducing gambling harm, and in this case, the increase in hours cannot be ident identified or demonstrated to provide any measurable benefit to our community in any shape or form um, other than an increase in, uh, in potential profit to the, the, the venue in this case. So this is a really clear example, I think, for, for us as planning committee members to understand where a planning application will have, as we know, a significant impact on our residents, but also will have a significant impact on the amenity of the neighbouring area it is set in an area that has industrial and big box retail and a number of other uses in the area, but also the idea that people um, would be leaving a venue at 5am is a concern to me, um, on not just in terms of the gaming activity but also the liquor um, uh, sales activity as well. So um, I support the officer's recommendation. I'm pleased to see that we've got an evidence-based position that we'd be putting forward. And, uh, and clearly this fails to meet the planning provisions and also I think Council's strong policy settings in this space. Um, and ultimately, um, it is incumbent upon Council to defend that position and here is an example of where we will do that. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Williams, as a second, oh, I'm would you happy like? to reserve my rights. Okay, thank you. Councillor Williams reserved the right to speak. Is, are there any other councillors that would like to speak in relation to this uh, motion? Councillor Reddy. Um, thank you, Chair Greco. Very briefly, I'd just like to draw people's attention to the relationship between alcohol outlets and family violence. And whilst family violence is uh, caused by gender inequality and rigid gender stereotypes, there is no doubt, and the evidence supports the fact, that alcohol outlets and alcohol consumption increases the frequency and severity of family violence incidents. This... Uh, venue is in East Preston, which we've identified as one of those areas of our municipality that experiences high levels of disadvantage. And I think the idea that we would make alcohol more available in an area that already experiences disadvantage is incredibly problematic. And for that reason, I'll support the officer's recommendation to refuse the <coughs> permit. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. Are there any further speakers in relation to this motion? No. Councillor Williams, do you want to exercise your right to speak? I think my fellow councillor has done a great job, but um, it really does concern me when we get a situation where venues want to extend such ridiculous hours um, on virtually every night of the week. I find it baffling. And as my fellow councillor said, obviously people who are fleeing for family violence might go there or leave drunk alcohol and go home and then um, commit family violence. It, it, it hurts to the core that, um, that this can be of no benefit whatsoever to our community, especially in an area where our most vulnerable people are, um, that we've seen from our statistics that that's the, and most of our vulnerable single parents or families are, and also that's where a lot of gambling is happening in that part of the city of Darabin. Um, but other than that, as I said, my fellow councillors have pretty much summed up all the other um, issues regarding why not to continue in allowing this venue to expand their hours. Thank you, Councillor Williams. I, I should have mentioned at the outset that we didn't have any... Um, the applicant was not willing to make a submission. Also, we didn't have any objectors to make a submission. Councillors, we're going to vote now, but just to be clear, we're voting. The motion before us is not to support uh, the application for the grounds that are listed there. 
And as Councillor McCarthy said, uh, this application is before VCAT and will be heard in the in a VCAT here on the 26th of August. And what we're voting on is the position that Council will be taking um, at that VCAT hearing. So those in favour of the motion as it appears up there on the screen, please put your hand up. I, I could take that as a unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. Okay, councillors, uh, we'll move on. We'll call uh, Councillor Newton back in and then we'll commence the meeting again. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Newton. Uh, we're now on item number six, 6.1, general planning information to schedule the VCAT applications. Um, do I have a, a mover and a second in relation? Move Councillor Rennie, second Councillor Williams. Um, any, Councillor Rennie, would you like to make any comment? No, thank you. Councillor? No, no, thank you. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Okay, carried unanimously. Uh, consideration item number seven, consideration of reports considered confidential. Um, I believe that there aren't any reports considered confidential tonight. No. Thank you for that. There's no confidential reports. So, councillors, meeting is closed. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to our officers. And um, that's all, folks. <laughs>